The title for the message this morning is X Marks the Spot. Look at your neighbor and say, X Marks the Spot. Look at your other neighbor and say, but the dotted line gets you there. All the Summit kids in the house, I need you to listen to me really close. All the Summit kids, wherever you are, up front and afar, I want you to listen to me. When you hear me say the phrase, X marks the spot, you already know what's coming. When you hear me say the phrase, X marks the spot, the first person to stand up gets a handful of candy. Now listen to me. It can't be X. It can't be marks. It can't be spot or the spot or marked spot. It has to be X marks the spot. Are you with me? I think it was Brody. Brody, come on up. There it is. So a few years ago, my wife and I watched a series of movies called The Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, some of you pronounce this Caribbean. I don't know that correct pronunciation, but I call it Caribbean. Uh, we watched these movies. Who's seen them? Anybody? Okay. We, uh, Captain Jack, Davy Jones, Orlando Bloom. Any of the kids seen Pirates of the Caribbean? You like the show? Yes. Parker doesn't really like the show. That's fine. We're going to talk about it anyway. Anyhow, the main character, uh, Jack Sparrow, has a map, okay? And that map just so happens to lead to the fountain of youth. And I know that's cliche, but it's true. I didn't write the thing. And on Jack's map was an X, okay? And that X represented the destination, of course. Leading up to that X was a dotted line that represented the best or only route to getting there in this case. So Captain Jack is on his way to the X, and there's this one scene in the movie where uh, Jack was swinging from the ship, being chased by a very angry monkey that definitely needed deliverance and some anointing oil. <laughs> and there are cannons going off, and ships are sinking, and hundreds of dead people are chasing him. The guy just cannot get a break. And I thought to myself while I was watching that, the X on that map better hold something incredible, something life-changing, something that I could not live without because at this point, it doesn't seem like anything on that dotted line could be worth what Jack was walking through. You with me so far? The X can't be worth what he's going through. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever felt that? Walking through a season of your life, a rough season, um, those happen often, and you're thinking, man, I hope this is worth it. Like, I hope there's something good on the other side of this because this is for the birds. This is not cool right now. God, what are you doing? Where are you taking? I thought you said God. And if you haven't experienced that, I've experienced it enough for all of us. So spoiler alert, Jack eventually makes it to the X. And when he gets there, the Spaniards show up out of absolutely nowhere and destroy the fountain of youth. Apparently for no other reason than just being incredibly rude. And then just about everybody dies and the story ends with nobody drinking from the fountain of youth. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> now, for us today, we may not be headed to a fountain of youth. Some of y'all wish you were headed there. But we're all headed somewhere, okay? And I believe, parents and kids alike, I believe that it's vitally important that we have a clear understanding of where we are headed and why we are heading there. Because if we don't have a good answer to this question, if we cannot clearly identify why we come to church, why we read the word, if we can't identify why we put our faith in Jesus and exactly where we are going, then the world will tell you where to go and what to do. And I promise you, it will not lead you to the place that God is calling you. It will not get you there. X marks the spot right here. But the dotted line gets you there. We've all seen a treasure. Everybody's seen a treasure map? I say we all, but maybe you haven't. I, I come across them all the time. Um, <laughs> we've all seen a treasure map, much like, you know, similar to the thing that's going on behind me, if you can see that. There's a dotted line, okay, that represents the route to an X. And usually that goes in and through and around some kind of geography. Mountains, oceans, rivers. Then there's the X, okay? And that represents the place that you are going the thing that you really want to find, the thing that you want to get to. And maybe for you right now on that dotted line, you feel like you're going over a mountain, maybe crossing a river, walking through the mud, swinging from a ship to being chased by evil monkeys. I don't know your situation. Or maybe for you, it's smooth sailing and you're making great time and life is great. Regardless of where you are, everybody wants the X, 
Okay, whatever that may, good, close. Whatever that may be for you. Maybe it's a new job. Somebody said, amen. Maybe, maybe it's a new car, a new spouse. Not a new spouse, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, careful, careful. Maybe it's a video game. Woo, that got you. You can't stand up for that one. Maybe it's an ice cream cone. Maybe right now all you can think about is CJ Maggie's. Chipotle Q, Chippy Q, Barbecue Sauce, Boneless Wings. Come on, somebody. <clears throat> I'm going to end service early. But very few people pay attention to the dotted line. It's more of a means to an end. We want the X. But the Pirates of the Caribbean wasn't about the X. It was all about getting to the X. The thing that makes the movie interesting. The thing that gives the movie character. The thing that makes us want to watch the movie. The thing that makes life fun to live is the dotted line, not the X. Think about this. So many people spend their entire life trying to get to a destination. Okay, and, and everybody in this room is trying to get somewhere or get out of something. We want the X. But some of the richest people, some of the most successful people on planet Earth are among the unhappiest people to ever live. It is said, check this out, it is said that the first man that ever climbed Mount Everest got to the top and saw another peak. Think about that. They asked him, what'd you do when you got to the top? He said, I got to the top and I looked off in the distance and I saw another peak and I started planning my route to get to the top of it. I also heard somebody say one time, the only thing left to do when you get to the top is jump off. And it's so true in so many ways. But without the dotted line, there wouldn't be a Pirates of the Caribbean. Here's the whole idea for today. The X is your purpose, it's your destiny, it's the thing you were created for and you can only find it in God. Kids, you can only find your purpose and your destiny. You can only find it in Christ Jesus. It will come from nothing else, from nobody else except Christ Jesus and he'll do it at, at a, a very young age. I want you to hold on to that because I'm going to tell you, if you walked in here this morning and you don't know what your purpose is, I'm gonna tell you what your purpose is. It's going to change your life. I'm going to tell you at the end of the service. Don't leave. X marks the spot right there. Wow, that was quick. But the dotted line gets you there. Today we're looking at an event in the life of King David. And we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 17. If your paper Bible saved and you brought your Bible, we are going to be in 1 Samuel 17. How many Summit kids in the house have heard about the great King David? I want you to shout. How many kids in the house have heard about the great King David? Me. Not a couple of you. That's good enough. <laughs> King David wasn't running from an evil monkey or being chased by an octopus. But his dotted line was full of adventure and triumph and failures and mistakes and redemption after those. David was a doer. He was a self-motivator. He listened for the voice of God, and he wasn't afraid to take action and make a move when he heard it. Now, sometimes he made the wrong move. King David wasn't perfect, but he was always repentant, and that's the key. David was the eighth youngest son of Jesse, and along with being the youngest, David was also the one who tended sheep which was usually reserved for the least esteemed of the family because who wants to take care of smelly sheep? Anybody? I've been trying to get Ron to buy a goat for years, but he won't let me buy it. Because they stink. And they're smelly. Tim knows goats stink. Nobody wants to take care of sheep. How many kids want sheep in their house? A couple of you. Parents, check that out. <laughs> Ask for Christmas. You just might get it. Now, the current king of Israel, Saul, was not doing a great job, to say the least. God was not happy with King Saul, and he is going to replace Saul. So God sends a prophet, okay, named Samuel to the house of Jesse to anoint a new king. When he gets there, Jesse lines up all of his sons except King David, or David at this point, because he was small and he was tending the sheep, and he really didn't seem to have the outward appearance of a king. 
Then Samuel, looking at all of Jesse's sons, he says, I know this is kind of awkward, Jess, uh, but the king ain't here. You know what I mean? I don't know how else to say it, but is this the best you got? And then Jesse says, well, there, there's, there's one more, but he's the youngest, and he's taking care of the sheep, and he kind of smells. And to be honest with you, Samuel, I don't think he's the guy you're looking for. Has anybody ever been there? Overlooked and underestimated? It's kids. Have you ever felt overlooked or underestimated? They're honest. They'll raise their hands right here in the front row. But as Samuel and Jesse were about to find out, God doesn't look at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. And kids, guess what? This is the crazy part. Some scholars believe that King David could have been as young as 10 years old when he was anointed to be the king of Israel. 10 years old. God can call you right now. God can speak to you right now. When Samuel was a young man, he heard the voice of God when he was a child, and God started speaking to him. There is no junior Holy Spirit. Pastor Dylan says that. I love that. There is no junior Holy Spirit. God can start working in the kids' lives right now, and he is. So Samuel tells Jesse to go get David, and just like that, a young, smelly, unqualified kid gets anointed to be the next king of Israel. And, and so Saul hears about it, and he willingly concedes. He packs up his bags. He wishes David the best, and David takes the throne and lives his life happily ever after. Are you sure? Are you sure? Hold on a second. You know what, kids? I accidentally read that from the convenient translation. Forgive me. That, it's a tricky one. Let's see here. It, it actually looks like David went back to the sheep. You'd see, you think that David just landed on his ex, but in reality, God just handed him a map. Not only was the ex years away, but the dotted line would prepare David for the ex. And just like God looks at the heart, God cares about who before the do. Kids, Summit Kids, every kid in the house, here's what I want you to do. I want you to repeat after me. You ready? I want you, after me, I want you to repeat this. God cares about the who? God cares about the who. Say it one time louder. God cares about the who? God cares about the who? Before the do. Before the and before we move to the really cool part, we need to understand a very basic principle. And that is this. God cares about who you are before he cares about what you can do. And sometimes we get so caught up in the future that we become paralyzed in the present and we miss out on the character to maintain the calling. Let me give you an example. One day, King David is in the field with the sheep and a lion comes and takes one of the sheep. What's he do? Nobody's there. Nobody's watching. He could have made up an excuse for why he came back with one less sheep. It would have been valid. Nobody would have known the difference. But does anybody know what King David did? He ran quickly towards the sheep and snatched it from the mouth of the lion. And then he does what any of us real men in here would have done. He grabbed the lion by the mane and beat it to death with a stick. <laughs> Here's the point. Here's the point. I want you to hear this. If you're taking notes, you can jot this down. Kids, you got to hear this part. Okay, this is important for you at a young age. Are you listening? Okay, okay. David was operating with the character of his purpose before he had the title that his purpose would require. David was operating with the character and integrity of his purpose before he had the title that his purpose would require. You see, long before the ex, long before he was an adult, long before he sat on the throne, he had a track record of trusting in God. You don't kill lions and bears with sticks unless you're certain that God is with you. But you see, some people want admiration without doing the small private things that are worthy to be admired. They get focused on who they want to be instead of who they are right now. But it is on the dotted line. It's on the journey, the ups and downs, the private battles with lions that God lays a foundation that your purpose can be built on. And hear me on this. If David wasn't willing to fight the lion, he never would have been prepared for Goliath. And as we are going to see 
In fact, it was David's dotted line that built the character that could carry the crown. The X marks the spot, Brody, but the dotted line gets you there. And in one of the most well-known episodes of King David's dotted line, and this is before he's actually sitting on the throne, the Israelites, led by the current king Saul, all the kids in the house say Saul, Saul. then say boo. Ew. They're on the battlefield preparing to fight the Philistines. And at this time, even before being appointed the king, David wasn't actually on the battlefield. He was in the tents, waiting tables, and serving cheese and crackers. And as David is approaching the battlefield, as he's approaching the tents, and I'm sure he's carrying a tray of hors d'oeuvres, he hears somebody, and he's wearing an apron, and he hears somebody off in the distance, and he's got little straws in it, and, and silverware, and one of those little check things that they hand you. He hears somebody off in the distance mocking the people of God. He hears this deep, loud, booming voice hurling insults and mocking God Almighty. And a holy fire raises up inside of David. Look what the shepherd says in 1 Samuel 17, 26. David asked the soldiers standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he's allowed to defy the armies of the living God? In today's terms, he said, is he raising his voice to us? Like, I know that man isn't talking to me. If nobody else is willing to fight this guy, I will. Let's go, bro. David was ready to brawl. Let me ask you a question. What is your response to the giants that you're facing in your life right now? Adults and kids alike, what is your response? The real issues of life. Maybe it's relationships, maybe it's money, maybe it's well-being, health issues, feeling lost, being lost. Maybe you're confused. What about what's happening in America right now? What's your response? Is it worry? Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Do you shrink back in silence? David's response wasn't to flee, but to fight, and our response should be the same. And I've got news for you. God wants you to fight. Some of the parents in here are like, careful. They fight enough. God wants you to fight. How else do you take territory for the kingdom of God? The enemy isn't going to give it to you. You have to fight for it. Yes, God wants you to speak out against lies and deception. Yes, God wants you to speak truth in the face of sin. Yes, God wants you to take a stand and hold your ground when it comes to holiness and purity. Yes, he wants men to be men again and fight for their families physically and spiritually. Yes, God wants you to fight. Indeed, he does. But so many people are waiting for the giant to fall without getting in a fight. And that just isn't how it works. Look at our nation Look what's happening. There's a giant standing before us. It's going to take a fight, folks. Kids as well. And some of the parents in this room need to put down the cheese and crackers. You're waiting tables in the Lord right now. You are walking around with a tray of hors d'oeuvres. And you need to be like David and allow a righteous anger to rise up inside of you. And there's some kids in here right now. They need to put down the cheese and crackers. You need to honor your parents. You need to listen to your parents. You need to stand up for truth wherever you are. When all the kids around you are telling you to go one way, you go the other way. That's what it means to put down the cheese and crackers and pick up a sword. 1 Samuel 17, 40 says, Then David took his staff in his hand. He chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in hand, he approached the Philistine. So scripture says that David, after he hears this guy mocking him, he gets upset and he goes, I'm going to take my slingshot, not an AR-15, not a shotgun. He going at it with a slingshot. Y'all, how many men in here riding around with a slingshot in your truck? <laughs> not many. David makes his way over to the stream and he picks up five stones because it is time to scrap. 
Now, on one hand, it seems like way too little because if we're being honest, even five stones most likely won't kill a giant. Kids in here, do you think five stones would kill a giant? These are, these are super spiritual kids. Any, ki- any real, I got any honest children in here? Do you think that five stones would kill a giant? No. Oh, keep it up. Okay, okay, okay. But on the other super spiritual hand, five stones also seems like way too many. Because if God is for you, Who can be against you? So why five stones? Let me tell you why. This is very important that you hear this. David knew that God only needed one stone. But if it came down to it, he was prepared to throw five. God, I know you can do it with one. But even if you don't, even if I fall right now, I'm going down swinging. That's a word for somebody in here this morning. That's a word for a mother or father or somebody watching online. You need to pick up some stones. The enemy's been beating you up. He's been beating your family up. He's been trying to get in and corrupt your children. And it's time to get gritty. Bite down on the mouthpiece and start swinging somebody. That's the truth. Look at the world we are living in, the confusion, the lies, the deception. You have to pick up some stones and get in the game. X marks the spot right there, young man. But the dotted line gets you there. The battle gets you there. The wars get you there. Fighting lions in private is what gets you there. Okay, so David starts to walk towards Goliath. He's got his stones in his hand. He approaches the giant with a holy fire in his heart and a righteous anger in his bones. 1 Samuel 17, 48 says, As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David realized how big the giant was. And with great fear, David second-guessed the power of God. Wait. You know what? That convenient translation will sneak up on you if you're not careful. You know, the convenient translation, just a side note here, is actually the easiest translation to read because you don't actually have to read it at all. It's more like a fill in the blank with what best suits you. Be who you are, say what you feel. If it doesn't fit with what you want, then it doesn't have to be real. The problem is, When you're working with a convenient translation, it will lead you to the convenient dotted line, and the convenient dotted line will have you serving cheese and crackers. No, the word says that David ran quickly toward the battle line. He met the opposition and matched his intensity. And that is something that somebody needs to hear in this place this morning in 2023. We need more Christians that are meeting the enemy at the battle line and matching his intensity and then some. Stepping out and speaking truth and trusting God to make a way where there seems to be no way. Ooh. Kids included. Let's stand up this morning. Y'all hear that? This young man down here has got to be eight years old. Said, oh, my back. (laughs) He's 12. (laughs) First Samuel 17, 49 says, David, reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead And he fell face down on the ground. He killed him. He died. The giant was gone with one stone between the eyes. But David had to have the faith to do it. David had to have the the boldness to put down the cheese and crackers. Pick up a sling and go and fight. You see, David's dotted line didn't lead him to a throne. It led him to a fight with a giant that nobody thought he could beat. But something amazing happened after David killed Goliath. We read it in Scripture. It says that the Israelites that previously were looking for a way around Goliath, they were looking for a way around the mountain. 
now ran right through the place that the mountain used to be, chasing the army that they were previously afraid to fight. Listen to me. Your dotted line isn't just about you. If you're not focused, you could be leaving countless people behind you that are not equipped to fight the giant you were supposed to kill. X marks the spot. Right there, Jace. It was you. That was creative, buddy. That was creative. I know, bud. I am here to tell somebody in this room right now. Some, I, I want to talk to the parents real quick with your children present. I'm here to tell somebody to put down the cheese and crackers and pick up some stones. Start fighting for what God has for you and your family instead of waiting for it to fall into your lap. Things did not look good for David. Things did not go the way that David thought they would go. And things may not be going the way you thought they would go right now. But I promise you, if you'll start slinging stones and trusting God with the rest, you will watch the giants fall and you will see the mountains move. X marks the spot, but the dotted line gets you there. Right there, young lady. After a dotted, li after a dotted line. Yep. You die, by the way. Um, after a decade on the dotted line and many battles in between, David eventually becomes king of Israel and takes the throne. But he never would have been prepared for it without the journey getting to it. Here's the point this morning. This is the whole point. We have many Davids in this room right now. Great men and women of God that are still serving cheese and crackers while the world looks at you and taunts you. But God is taking you somewhere right now. And I'm talking to all the kids in the house. Wherever you are and whatever you do, are doing, God has a plan for you right now. You don't have to wait until you're older. You can do it right now. You can talk to God right now. You can have a relationship with God right now. God can show you what your ex is right now. He can do it. He wants to train you and teach you in this season. Don't get so focused on where you want to be in the future that you miss on what God is teaching you right now. At the beginning of this message, just a few minutes ago, I told you that I was going to tell you your purpose. Here it is. You ready for it? Here it is. For everybody in this room. Your purpose is is to spend an eternity with Jesus. That's it. The truth is, our X is ultimately eternity with Christ. This life is the dotted line. And you can get the house, and you can get the car, and you can get the family and the spouse, hopefully not a new spouse. You can get all these things. But you'll never reach the X in this life. Someone needs to hear that. The X does not exist here on planet Earth. The world will try to tell you that it does. That you can reach a utopia. That you can reach perfection, love, and acceptance. It doesn't exist until Christ comes back. And when he comes back, he's establishing his kingdom. Here's what I'm going to ask. We're going to play a song that we just did today. Was this the first time we did that song? We're going to play a song. It just says, I thank God. Woo! It says, hell lost another one. I'm free. What parents in here know? What parents in here have seen your kids come back to Christ? Have you ever seen God work a miracle in your family? If you'll just keep believing for it, you will watch these young kids right here do incredible things for the kingdom of God. And right now, what I want to do is I want to call every kid in the house. I want you to come forward. If you're a summit kid, come down to the front right now. All over the place. Come on. Come on down. And I want you to be bold. And I want you to be brave just like King David. And as we sing this song, I want you to lead the entire church in this song. I want you to be with raised hands, jumping, saying, I thank God. Hell lost another one. He just doesn't have its grip on me.
And all the parents of these kids, I want you to come down right now with your kids and I want you to praise the Lord. Your dotted line has led you to this moment. Come now.